Welcome to a Management Plus training webinar. My name is Kevin Sloan. I am a certified electronic health record specialist and certified ophthalmic technician. Management Plus is an industry leader in EHR and we want to provide you with the documentation tools and the skills to use these tools proficiently. Today's training webinar is titled Clinical Decision Support Rules MD or ophthalmology forms. Let's get started. The purpose of our training webinar today is to show you the five clinical decision support rules that are built within Management Plus on the ophthalmology forms. If you have the optometry forms, there is a separate training webinar for those since they are slightly different. So this is just for the ophthalmology forms. Let's take a look at this. Number one is associated with your smoking status. There are options contained within the smoking status list that are government approved and you must choose one of these items. If you choose former smoking and then exit the control either by entering another or pressing tab, you will not see your clinical decision support role. But choosing light tobacco user, heavy tobacco smoke, smoker, smoker, current status unknown, or current everyday, or current someday, any of these options, when this control is exited by pressing tab or clicking into a different control, will display this informational message. Don't forget to discuss smoking cessation. Whenever you click that, it will automatically set the focus on the discuss cessation so you can press your space bar to set the flag or you can just click it with your mouse key. That is your clinical decision support rule number one. Your second CDS rule is associated with the fall risk. If Mr. Bob Hope was alive, which he is not, but if he was, he'd be 112 years old. Previously, we have set the flag for patient assessed for fall risk. We have set that, which means that we have asked the patient if he has fallen in the last six months. If he says no, you click the checkbox and set the flag. If they say yes, you still set the flag in the checkbox, but then tell the patient to visit their family physician in regards to that. You should update this once a year by clicking the, the control, exiting the control, and then clicking that again, that will update the field audit, and you should do that once a year. I'm going to unselect that, and then exit the form, and then I'm gonna come back to the form again. Doing this, upon entering this form, the past family social history form, it queries the patient's date of birth, determines how old they are, and if they're over 65 years old, you'll get an information message displayed that says, don't forget to assess fall risk. Clicking OK will allow you to do that. And if you do not select this checkbox and set the flag, every time you go to this form, you will have that informational message displayed. Clicking this, We'll set that and you will no longer see that. This is a static form as you can see right here it has a letter S on the end of the past family social history form so that means it's going to just fulfill that CDS rule from this point forward and as I mentioned a few minutes ago it's a good idea to just update that field audit. If you're ever audited and they take a look at that and they see the field audit uh, was set five years ago or quite a long time in the past, uh, they may ding you for that because uh, they want you to be checking that uh, at least on a yearly basis. So that's CDS rule number two. The third one found on the physician desktop, I'm going to enter into the number one diagnosis slot and then put in a diagnosis code of E10.311 
and then I'm going to exit that control. Upon exiting that control, an information message display that says don't forget the communication with a patient's diabetes physician. Or, don't forget to communicate with a patient's diabetes physician. Every one of these will do that upon exiting that control. You get the same message. This will display for E10.311 up to E10.319, 329, 339, 349, and 359. Any of those codes within any of these lookup lists will display that same message. So let's try this one. So you can see here we have the same information message. This is triggered by exiting this control, which means you must enter this control to in order to exit that. If these are set via a script button or from a potential diagnosis, you will not ever see that CDS rule fire because the code is being set via a script and you have not physically entered that, that which is okay. That's perfectly fine, uh, but it, you're not really able to take advantage of that CDS rule uh, by not entering this control, but that's okay. Your system uh, is still set up to do that, so in the event that you do enter this, you know, it, it will still fire that CDS rule. So it will fire for all of those. Okay. The next CDS rule is in regards to medications reconciliation. This is triggered when you have a referring physician documented. As you can see here, I do not have a referring physician documented. So I can go to the medications and allergies form and you will not see an information message display. But let's go ahead and put in the same one say the refer primary care was the referring doctor. Now when we enter the medications and allergy form, we'll get the informational message that says, reminder, medications need to be reconciled. Okay. And that will happen uh, no matter what sequence you access this form, you will get that over and over again until those medications are reconciled. There's two ways that you can do this. One is you can click this button here that says Medication Reconciliation, which will take care of that. And the other is you can click the button here that says Medication Reconciliation. These are the exact same buttons that do the same thing. This one is here in the event that you're actually reviewing the meds and allergies uh, via the runtime narrative, which will fire up here. So if you take a look at these meds and these allergies and you've asked the patient are they still using these as indicated and there are no changes this is just a time saver to be able to click this button now when I click this button if you look in this area here when I click this button a message will be displayed medications reconciled and allergies reviewed today now if you go back to the medications and allergies form you will not get that information message any longer. And again, this only occurs if you have a referring physician documented. If it is not documented, you will not get that message. That's CDS rule number four. The last clinical decision support rule is found on the Tech, Up, tech Workup form. This is in association with your IOP if you, enter, if you enter an IOP over 23, you will get the alert. So let's put in 23 here, exit the control, and you can see we don't get anything. Let's put 24 here, and sure enough, we get the little alert display here, and this also turns it to red. If we come back into this and edit that and make it less, the alert goes away and it turns to black. It'll work the same way here in the right eye. You'll get a separate informational message for the right and for the left as well. As well. That 
is your fifth clinical decision support rule. And again, if you change these to where it is below that threshold of 23, those will go away. That is your five clinical decision support rules. Let's click on File on the main screen, Administration, System Properties, and then Meaningful Use. There is a specific date control within this section for you to set your date of when you have your five clinical decision support rules. This is generally to be set whenever you begin to run live EHR. At Management Plus, we have all of these clinical decision support rules set up for you in advance, so you can rest assured that whenever you start to run live EHR, go ahead and put the date that you first run EHR with live patients here, and you'll be all set with that. You're, you're all taken care of on this section here. Naturally, you will want to put in the dates of all of these others whenever you complete those. This concludes the training on the clinical decision support rules for the ophthalmology forms. Thank you.